across the United Kingdom. Jane Ellison. The day after the riot and looting in Clapham Junction in the heart of Battersea, my constituency, um, we saw the inspiring sight of the Broom Army of volunteers yeah. coming together, many of them young people, uh, to do something really positive, as well as wanting to reclaim streets, which I'm afraid they did feel at times have been abandoned. And they also wanted to express solidarity with local shopkeepers and businesses. Can I very much welcome what the Prime Minister has said on business rates, suspension, but will he also commit the government to do all it can to support everyone locally who wants to make sure we keep these vital businesses going and attract more businesses into our cities and town centres? Yeah. Well, I certainly back what the Honourable Lady says, and I know that she will be on to the Business Department and DCLG Department on behalf of her constituents. And let me just say how much I admire the Broom Army, uh, not just in Clapham, but in other parts of our country, people coming together and saying they didn't want to put up with this and they wanted to clean up their neighbourhoods. They are the best of British. John Ashworth. Uh, Prime Minister will be aware that in the city centre of Leicester, in my constituency, we have some instances of thuggish criminality, but thankfully not on the scale of other cities. However, the most disgraceful incident was the torching of Age Concerns Ambulance Bus, a bus that takes many frail elderly people to daycare on a daily basis. Will the Prime Minister look at putting aside emergency funds, a pot of money for charities to apply for that so they can replace facilities that might have been destroyed in these riots? Well, I, I absolutely share what the Honourable Gentleman says. Some of the things and places and people that were attacked were truly shocking. And, and for people to attack the sort of facility he's talking about really is appalling and should make us stop and think about what's happened in our country. In terms of getting compensation, getting money, I've set out the schemes, all of which I think will be available for the sort of um, charity that he's speaking about. Nicola Blackwood. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I join the Prime Minister in praising the bravery of the emergency services and echoing the disbelief of this House that children as young as 11 and 12 have been involved in the violence and criminality of the last few days. Can the Prime Minister tell the House whether the age of any of the rioters prevented the police from their use of anti-riot techniques? Well, I'll certainly look at what the Honourable Lady says. Of course, the age of criminal responsibility is 10, and we don't have any proposals to change that. But she raises an important point about whether the police at any moment needed to hang back because of the very young age, and some of the people doing the looting were under the age of 10, uh, had that effect. I'll certainly get back to her about that. Clive Efford. For the last two nights in my constituency, I've had a very, very heavy police presence due to right-wing extremist groups focusing on Hilton uh, and trying to uh, create unrest and, uh, and bad feelings yeah, between different racial groups. Uh, Whilst we want to support people who are public-spirited and coming out to defend their communities like some of my constituents have done, <laughs> would my Prime Minister join me in saying to those people, don't be diverted from your efforts by those extremists seeking to exploit this situation. I, I think the Honourable Gentleman speaks not only for his constituents but frankly for the whole House in deprecating the EDL and all they stand for and their attempt to somehow say that they're going to help restore order is I describe some part of our yeah, society as sick and yeah. has done sicker than the EDL. Hello? Mr Duncan Haynes. Speaker, it will soon be 50 Hello? years since the last Royal Commission on Policing and the Prime Minister today has alluded to some of the uh, changing challenges that the police have faced in that time. Uh, since it is at least as important to be able to mobilise police officers as to consider absolute numbers, yeah. uh, will he consider uh, yeah, the case for a fresh Royal Commission? Well, I'm afraid I think the, the need to reform police and policing <laughs> and modernise it is more urgent than that. It's often said about Royal Commissions yeah. that they take minutes and last for years. I, I don't Same. think we've got years. I think we need to get on with this job now. Russian Should I come for that way? Should I come over? When on Monday night spilled into my, the heart of my constituency, I don't know. local Why? people of all backgrounds came together, from businesses, uh, from mosques and the wider community, so. with the police. They stood About in peaceful half an hour, maybe. to keep out the rioters and help keep the community safe. No, I'm gonna we go are now, now faced with the threat of the English Defence League coming to my constituency <laughs> in September. Bit, yeah. And despite requests to the police before these riots um, and to the Home Secretary, we haven't got an affirmation that there will be a ban. Will the Prime Minister look at legislation, if necessary, to stop the EDL from marching and also to stop the march static marches from taking place? Um, well, as the Honourable Lady will know, there is a process that has to be followed where the local authority and the police have to apply to the Home Office for a ban 
they should follow that process and we'll try to make sure that the right thing happens.